the streets and houses, rainbow climbing high. Everyone can see it smiling over the sky. Paint the whole world with a rainbow. I can't, I can't believe he's good. Why? Why did Ralph, Jane, and the other one got him down in cold blood? Oh, Zippy, it's because they're total cunts. They were jealous of our successful careers post Rainbow. Fuck off, fuck off. You work at a cashier in quality safe. Eee, um, Zippy, you're a heroin addict who lives in a bin. Shut your ugly disease twat of a mouth, God. I told you I'm a tortured artist. Boys, boys, Jeffrey wouldn't want this. Jeffrey would want terrible vengeance. I'm gonna maul their fucking balls off! True. I'm going to stick them in the meters with a rusty needle. Yeah, let's do it! Let's fuck him up! And so, standing over Jeffrey's coffin, the Rainbow Boys plan their revenge. Welcome to Shark Select. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to Shark Select, the gaming podcast equivalent of being delayed until September and still working your staff to death. I am your host, Winstolf, and I am joined as ever by those sexy thick boys, Stu, and his equally sexy brother, Ryan. Hello. What was your reference about? It was a uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, right. It's been delayed till September to give them more time. Oh, but also they're working like 12 hour days until it's finished. So, yeah, cool. <laughs> Sucks to be on on the the CD Project Red team right now. Pressures of uh, releasing uh, yeah. the Magnum Magnum Opus. The Magnum Opus. Mm. Yeah, I mean if it's as good as The Witcher Three, I'm gonna be all over it, mate. But uh, let us see. So yeah, how are you guys today? You good, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, you, you feel on it today? Yeah. You you feel on it, Stu? And I mean the podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. Sexy. Have we been, have we been up to anything fun? Feeling it. Mainly, just just mainly feeling it. Yeah, fingers Fast. on the pulse. Ooh, there's not one well, that with the pulse under the. No, I'm not getting into that. Um, the so dick first vein. Of all, yes, dude, the dick vein. That's what I was. That's what I was suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, he's off. He's off, and we're barely a couple minutes into it. So yeah, let's go straight to the promotional stuff and wash the taste of that out of our mouths. Um, we get this boring bit out of the way first because I used to take ages babbling about it at the end, and Ryan well, nearly killed me. It's a boring bit. Yeah. Why do we say it's the boring bit? Because Ryan said it's the boring bit. Ryan's, Ryan hates it. I've got to get it out of the way oh, quick. because your outros used to take 20 minutes just to say, <laughs> I'm at Winstorf on Twitter. All right, far, it's far, fair enough. Right, okay, so yeah, this is the better version, which is less boring. So yeah, we're on Twitter, at Shark Select Pod, all one word, obviously, because it's Twitter. Yeah, that's all you need. And it's run by Stu. And Stu is, um, if you say Stu put some weird stuff up. Any good ones this week, Stu? Uh, not just the uh, what people responses really. Pretty quiet week for Shark Select. <clears throat> no bad thing, no bad thing. So we're also on Inst. Well, I want. Oh, I won't even bother with Instagram. We're on Instagram. Search us if you want. We don't do out. We're also on YouTube. We're so old, we've, we've got some old episodes up. Look for them. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pod Chaser is good. Look for us on Pod Chaser. Go on there. Give us high scores, and we will become the greatest gaming podcast ever. Yeah, like and review on Pod Chaser. Find us on Twitter. That's that's it. That's all you need to say iTunes slash Apple Podcast, Ryan. Never forget that. No, That's where all the scores Apple. happen. Give us five stars on there and the internet will collectively come over your body. What's well, the reviewer or mine, regardless. Um, Yours regardless, I suppose. Oh, yeah. yeah, didn't get that much thought. Uh, and, so- and follow us on uh, Spotify so you can get featured on there as well. Yes, of course. We are on Spotify, aren't we? Which is where all the best streaming happens. And where most of the people on my team at work have been listening to us. So I'm surprised I've not been sacked yet. In, f- in fact, Joe, I forgot to tell you, you're like um, a celebrity sometimes on our floor. It's like, uh-huh. oh my god, that, that's, that's him, isn't it? That's Stu that you do Shark Select with. It's like, yeah, that's right. He's famous. 
He's one of them thick, wizarding weirdos. Yeah, yeah. 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 As he shuffles past with a cage full of rooters. I don't transport rooters. Is he a? Is he? Is he like a work hermit? Yeah, what it is, it's like <laughs> this little um, vents cut into the wall. And he's like a little... You know, like the imps in Dungeon Keeper? He's yeah. like, he's like blah, 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 and just running through it with a load of rooters and uh, some cables. Uh, in a big sack, yeah. <laughs> and then you see people hitting him like, get out of the way, boy! And then he runs away. Uh, That's what he's like. Does that mean that if you look up at the wrong time, there's like a wi- uh, like a horrible demon hand just floating over over you? Yeah. It's like, like, oh, no, it's going to pick me up, any of the cunt. Yeah. And then it's like, Wow and you get picked up and just dropped in a hatchery or something. Yeah. Ah, Dungeon Keeper, they, they, they were the good times. Fucking class, Dungeon Keeper. Fucking was. So, that's the uh, initial uh, housekeeping out of the way. Let's move on to the first part of the podcast, our first regular feature. Mm. If you're fir- if you're first time listening, you're in for a treat, because it's time for... It's Ryan's Surprise, everybody. I've got to treat you to um, another AI stri- uh, script. Oh, fucking A. Did you see what I linked you to on Twitter, Ryan, the other day? That I think it's Warner Brothers is trialing an actual AI script writing machine. <gasps> well, there you go. So you know, you know what it's going to be like. It's going to be weird. Yeah. I th- yeah, Warner Brothers has been listening to Shark Select and has stolen your idea, right? Mm. So if we get, if you watch National Treasure three, well, it's that's in. That's oh in, shit! That's been it announced. Is. Oh shit! Nicholas Cage will be <laughs> playing every character. <laughs> <laughs> this is not like Microsoft Word. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it's all coming to pass. Yeah. Oh my god! Go on, then, Ryan. What's this week's? So this one we're going to we're going to do Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Tales Tell No Dead Men Dead Dead Die Dead 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 Two. I love it already. <laughs> it can't be sponsored to the last Pirates film. Uh, well, it might be. <laughs> so exterior Caribbean. Uh, Captain Jack Sparrow pirates around on a boat ship. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Poseidon, Pope of the Water, <laughs> jumps out of the water, but he is the water, so now there's no water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sparrow. Ah, the water has gone. Silence. Poseidon's eyes are beach balls. Hey, why not? <laughs> Are you the Jack Sparrow from the other terrible movies? <laughs> that depends. What's in it for me, the Jack Sparrow? Jack drinks a bottle of Bacardi rum, the only rum made from real bats. <laughs> Strange. <Makes sense>. <laughs> <laughs> I have a mission for you, Jack. At the end of the ocean, Kira Knightley, the woman from Atonement 2007, jumps on the boat ship. Sword in hand. Kira. Time for some atonement, 2007. (laughs) Smash cut to interior, Caribbean. Smash cut to exterior, Caribbean. Okay. Smash mouth to interior. (laughs) Somebody once told me the world was going to roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Is that's, that it? That's it, yeah. That was beautiful. Why did it end with Smash Mouth? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like any good film, it has Smash Mouth all star Yeah, it. any film from 2001 to 2005. Oh, fucking hell. That is fair play. That was a good one. I enjoyed it. I, I like to imagine the cut cut to interior, cut to exterior. It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think of that one, Stu? Yeah, it was good. I think it's already better than um, Dead Man's Chest and whatever the third one was called. Yeah, yeah. Too many pirates, I think the third one. Too was many called. die time. Yeah. Too many pirate time. So I, was, I think the third one had about twenty thousand pirates in it to keep track of. Mm. It was like Game of Thrones, but pirates. Yeah. You ever noticed? That, I know it's finished now, like, but normally there's a bit of like a like bit of conversation going on still. No one's talked about Game of Thrones since it ended. Did it even happen? <laughs> I think because I was so disappointed from how badly the season ended, then everyone just stopped talking about it. Yeah, because I remember Stu used to love a bit of Game of Thrones. I mean, what, how was the last season for you, Stu? Shit. It just, did it just break it for you? Yeah, pretty much. It was really sped up. Like, season one, it took a few episodes to travel down to King's Landing. And then in, but in this one, they're like, there in the same episode. <laughs> to King's Landing? You know why, don't you? They got there the first time. They unlocked fast travel. Ah. Uh, yeah, could be. Just fast travel to King's Landing. I mean, what's your? I mean, I think fast travel can break a good RPG, man. You yeah. just get too used to just zipping around the map, don't you? Especially games like Red Dead Two. I never once fast travelled in that because so many things happen between mm. destinations that you skip out, skip out a load of stuff. 
I love what I read there too, where someone just tries to ambush you, so you just shotgun them in the face. I mean, you missed that, wouldn't you? Right, okay, so, yeah, that was a good surprise this week, Ryan. Thank fuck it didn't involve 9-11 or any other uh, tragedy. <laughs> <coughs> that oh, was yeah. ooh, that was awkward. <laughs> it's, it's or even even controversial um, comments about how the color of space might be the same as like Samuel Jackson. Yeah, true. I think my favorite one you've done so far was either Transformers, where they turned into a copy of Cars Two on DVD, or um, the Chipmunks because of the After Effects you put in on your faces. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> just, well, and it just turns into cut, not his. Um, <laughs> yeah, they knock his head off and it turns into spiders. Yeah. I mean, just to self-wank the podcast a bit there. That was one of our favourite ones. Yeah. I think people need to check that one out. Can you remember what episode that one was on? Oh, God, I don't know. Some of season three. Yeah, one of the episodes, what we did. Just listen to the compilation station and it's got them all. <clears throat> ah, yeah, get on the compilation station. Good point, Ryan. So, with uh, Ryan's surprise now firmly within the archives of Shart Select, it's time to move on to... The main feature of the podcast. Do you want to do a jingle for you? Yeah. Problem is, I'm running out of words that rhyme with feature. Um, I need to mix it up a bit. Well, this one's talking about our game Wishes. Rhymes somewhere with that, I don't know. Yeah. Like Stew's Bitches, that sort of rhymes, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Sort of like, we all know about Stew's Dirty Wishes. What? But now I can't think of something that rhymes with wishes. It's games that we've think that we've made up. There you go. That's the that's the uh, jingle for this week. My poetry mind's not working this week, everyone. I think it's crashed. So yes, the main feature this week we thought it'd be a bit different, and instead of discussing things what have already come to pass, we would if we were God. What would you like to see? Well, what games would we create? Yeah, <clears throat> for you, the people. Um. Also, it could be any game. It could be a retro era game. It could be a modern era game. It could be for any point in gaming history. Uh, it could be anything you want. So, who's going to go first? I don't I mind going. I'll go first. Go on then, Ryan. Get in there, son. So, first of all, um, my wife's got a wish as well. She said she wants to play Loco Roco 2. I think that's like, out. No, like, new one that's not on PSP because we haven't got one anymore. Oh, like a new Loco Roco for the ages? Yeah. Or for a proper console, not a yeah, 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 or like a handheld or something, just a new, a new one she, she can play. Yeah. That's a, a nice bonus suggestion there. Yeah. I like that. We'll take that on board. I just thought of one as well. Time splits four. Ooh. That'd be good. One that'd be nice. Yeah. How would you? Pitch that would it? be nice. I wouldn't. I'm, uh, that's just an. an that's just a off the cuff. Yeah. Yeah. I've fair got enough. three different style games that might not be out. Might not be out in the main world yet. Okay. So it could be new new ones. So the first one I'd like to see is Halo, but from a foot soldier's point of view. Just a, a Marine? Yeah, yeah. So, you, so you're playing as a Marine, <clears throat> and it'd be like cover-to-cover cover based, and obviously the enemies would be tougher, and elites would be like fucking well scary. Yeah, they would. Especially a, or like a hunter, because they're like 12 foot tall, <clears throat> and if you're like just a six foot Marine, you're like, oh, fuck. But they will one-hit kill you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. And like... Maybe Spartans or like ODSTs are like you like look up at them and they're all like whoa yeah because they come stomping past or they might like if it's like a campaign mode or something you're fighting away and then like you hear this crashing and stuff and then a Spartan comes crashing through just guns down like everybody in front of you and then carries on his path going somewhere it's like that would fuck be cool. <clears throat> so when you say cover base would it be third person for that or would it be like oh yeah, maybe like Rainbow Six where it goes to third, it goes to for third person for the covers. Yeah, like the recent Deus Ex games as well. They did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that sounds pretty good. Would it be big war zones or like covert stuff or a bit of both? A bit of both. Just like it looks like a classic Halo game, but instead you played as a much more squishy soldier. Would it be on the this generation or would you go back to the 360 or the original Xbox for that? Just, just make it now. Yeah, so it comes out. Sweet. And what, and then, would it, um, what would it be called? Halo. Just Halo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's not been one called Halo yet. The first one was Halo Combat Evolved. Yeah, Halo enough. Combat Devolved. Just <clears throat> UNSC Soldier 1. <laughs> Halo, UNSC Soldier 1. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't, don't do names. I'll just, this is just the idea. So Bungie, or no, sorry, it's not Bungie, 343 Industries, if you're listening, get it made. It'd yeah. be sick. Ryan has decreed that it must be so. 
I think well, I think it'd be pretty cool anyway. I'd play it. And I'd then happily play it. Because you could still do the multiplayer and the firefight modes and all that. And then just just a bit different, isn't it? Because you like the Covenant, they're not really that scary as you're stomping around as a Spartan. No, I mean they can be if they overwhelm you, but if the flood was the fucking scariest thing, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, well imagine if flood if it was if you were playing <laughs> as a UNSC soldier. Oh fuck that. And you could also unlock you could get into a warthog and drive it really weirdly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just recreate the AI. Yeah. <coughs> Would you play it, Jay? Uh, yeah. Well, give it a go. <coughs> yeah, so it does sound. It sounds like a good idea to me. Um, how, would it be mostly campaign, or would it be focused on multiplayer? What would it be? Uh... Well, uh, there'd be, I reckon, mostly campaign, but and then there'd be obviously be a multiplayer. Yeah. Like a maybe a forge. Maybe a forge world, but it'd be a lot more. Be a lot more cramped, I think. Than yeah. For the Halo games. It'd be like, um, if it's cramped multiplayer, it'd play like the old um, Doom multiplayer mods and stuff like that, wouldn't it? It'd be a fast yeah. and incredibly nasty combat. <coughs> Maybe even cool. like Gears multiplayer, because you are cover to cover, I suppose. Yeah, but not rolling around with a shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Killing people. Mm. yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So that was Ryan's first idea, Halo, um, just Halo, or was it US UNSC Marine 1? Yeah, Halo UNSC Soldier 1. That'll do. There you go. <laughs> Gen- generic soldier one. Uh, so let's jump to Stu for the Stu's ideas now, then. What have you got for us, Stu? Uh, an up-to-date Chaos Engine. Okay, so talk us through it. So it'd be like Chaos Engine, but on an Xbox One. For people who haven't played or ever heard of Chaos Engine, <laughs> talk us through it. It's like a steampunk top-down shooter. Mm. So would it still be top-down? Or would you make it a different I don't know, maybe first or third person would probably work better. And just, top, I think it was just top down because that's all you could do at the time. But. That was his limitations, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So was it gunning down hordes of enemies, upgrading weapons? That yeah, while well, I was thing? playing as a mad scientist or a strange other fellow, wasn't it? It was all, all yeah, weird, weird like, like mercenary people, yeah. fellas, yeah. Did it play a bit like Smash TV or something like that? Top down bullet hell thing? Yeah. Yeah, but it was a bit slower paced. Hmm. Okay. I imagine it's a, in my imagination, it sounds a bit like Bullet Storm. This re huge reimagined version. No, that'd be too <coughs> quick, and like, this would be more like horror. Based. Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds good then. So more like like love, like a Lovecraftian first person shooter with like trippy sequences and shit. Yeah, like Fear then maybe. Yeah, yeah, like Fear, but it's co op as well. No, it's good. Yeah, uh, good. That sounds good. Uh, would you have it? So that'd be on modern consoles, would it? Yeah. All right, extra question I'm going to throw in. Who would you have to develop and publish it? Yeah, probably Infinity Ward. Yes, that would be a good idea. They are like the masters, aren't they? Yeah, see, I'd, I'd oh, no, I'm sorry, I'd not, Infinity Monolith. Ward. not Infinity Ward. Not Infinity Ward. The other one, Respawn. No, Respawn. They did Titanfall and Apex Legends, didn't they? Yeah. So I'd gone Monolith. You reckon? I mean, Monolith... Well, they did Fear 1. They did Fear 1, and Fear 2 was good, but Fear 3 was pretty shit, Yeah, it? but if it's your idea, you tell them you don't want it like Fear 3. <laughs> if you, if <laughs> I see you making it like Fear 3, fucking dead. What the fuck were they thinking? <laughs> the only good thing in Fear 3 was the assault rifle. Uh, yeah, so that was Stu's idea. What, would it just be called Chaos Engine, Stu? Yeah, just go for a hard reboot. Uh, fair enough. The best kind of reboot. If you ask me, hard, stiff, throbbing reboot. Anyway, so that, that's you. So we've got two games so far. Right. Uh, do you want me to go for my idea now? Just one second first. We'll on, yeah, Just, yeah. Do you remember a PS1 era top down shooter called Reloaded? Yeah. It rings a bell. Yeah, uh, that was weird. Yeah, a lot of the PS1 games were, because it's that awkward transition between the 16-bit era and like the modern era, wasn't it? Mm. So you've got some really weird ideas. Do you, remember, do you ever see Return Fire? No. That was a really weird game. It's a top-down like tower defence game, almost, but you control little army vehicles, and you have to try and capture the flag off your enemy. No, different right. vehicles have different skills and stuff. It was well That sounds like a DEFCON game. Was it DEFCON 9? <clears throat> no, it was just called That's Return Fire. DEFCON... DEFCON 5. Oh, was it Defcon Five? I remember Defcon Five. That yeah. was sick. That was I fucking love that game. Yeah, Return... that would be a nice remake as well. Yeah, I think Return Five would be, but that's not. But that's not what I'm having for. My choice is going to be something that me, me Stuart, Ryan used to uh, talk about quite often back in the day. 
Imagine a Call of Duty campaign, like from the day when you played different from different perspectives, but it was Warhammer Forty Thousand, and you played as an Imperial Guard. So, so for instance, like say the story was that you had to take back a world that was infest, infested by chaos, and you played as a, a regular Imperial Guard soldier, which would be like any other Call of Duty game fighting chaos mooks. It'd be a bit like Ryan's uh, Halo UNSC Soldier One. Mm. Where also you're a bit squishier and you have to f- hang around with your unit like in early Call of Duty games. It's just blowing away chaos baddies everywhere. Yeah, so have... the majority would be like shooting, like you'd be fighting other cultists. Yeah, that's right. So they're like the chaos version of the Imperial Guard, aren't they? Like corrupted yeah, yeah. planetary defence and all that stuff. And every now and again they might whip out a tank or a, a dreadnought or something for an intense boss battle and things like that. But then... Say the secondary campaign, you could be playing as a space marine or something. So that's more your big stomping around, uh, just mass, massive open gun battles. Not, not have to worry about cover or anything. Then you could get to fight bigger enemies. That'd be pretty cool. Like, that's where probably some of the big, like, killing demons and shit would happen. Yeah. And let's say the final perspective, just to mix things up, you could be like one of the alien races that's stuck on the planet, like a tower or an Eldar or something. And you end up all crossing paths at some point in the story. That'd be well good, wouldn't it? Hmm. What do you reckon to that? Yeah, yeah sounds quite good, that, yeah. I mean, that would probably have Infinity War release. Infinity Ward, even. My bad. And I'd probably do it around about the time of Modern Warfare or so. So I'd say back on the last gen. Or the 360 or something, when Call of Duty was at its height. And you had games like Space Marine coming out and stuff. It'd be good, wouldn't it? Hmm. Well, you'd have it de- developed for that. You wouldn't have it now. I mean, I would say for me, there's not been many good Warhammer games to get people hyped, has there, in recent years? I was thinking, like, if you release it around the time of Space Marine, that was quite popular, wasn't it? So people might... And Dawn of War 2 and all that, so people might... Why are you releasing stuff in the past? Because yeah, no one will play it then, would they? Well, we've got full, <laughs> we've got full access to the timeline. We can just... We, oh, really? We're wizards. We can go back in time. stuff in... Yeah, but do you want to play it now? You just have, you just like so you would have it in the just past re- and you just like so remember it like you just be oh, yeah, playing that yeah. game. Ah, but HD remaster for modern consoles. So you want it out now, then, don't you? Because you never. So you just want to release a HD remaster, a HD of, a game remaster that came out of a game that doesn't years exist. Ago. Well, I'm just thinking. Also, now our twenties could enjoy it, and then we could enjoy it again now. Might I just release it now then. Well, it's just it's like, weird, weird concept. Yeah, just that, it's, it's, just like, it's like strange. It's like I, I want to play a Warhammer 40k game back in 1989, so I'm going to release it on the Mega Drive. I did say at the start that we could go anywhere throughout gaming history and do this. Seems weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. Silly concept. <laughs> All right. Fine. These Just... are games I would like to see, but I want it released tw- like 12 years ago. Well, I'm thinking in, ter- <laughs> I'm thinking in terms of when would have been a good uh, when when would have been a good time to release. But well, fair well, enough. If we- why not release games now? I don't understand. Surely well, if, now's the best time, so you can play it, and you've got all the best technology. <laughs> well, just to avoid time travel, uh, abusing time travel, I'll just scrap that whole fucking idea, shall I? Yeah. <laughs> all right, I whatever. thought of a really good game I want to play, and I want to release it in the past, 12 yeah. years ago. It's fine, because I wouldn't have been around so to I play can, it. So I can talk about it now and reminisce. Well, also, <laughs> and have a HD remaster. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd do that, couldn't you? But also, we, 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 we actually discussed it about 10 years ago, so we would have been fucking loving it back then, wouldn't we? Fuck, that game I invented... Today was well fact, 12 years ago. In fuck. fact, if past me, <laughs> if past me played that game and got to today and heard myself saying this, like, fuck, I made it happen. We really are wizards. Yeah, but then you yeah. go, just make it now. Look here, you contrary little cunts. <laughs> You're going back in time and that's the fucking end of it. Ah! Right, okay. I think I've got that out of my system. So, uh, Ryan, what's your next choice? Um, so I was thinking, because I, I enjoyed Spin It Cell Double Agent, right? So I, yeah, I liked the whole sneaky bit in the base and stuff and your choices. In the, yeah, in the hub world. Yeah. Where you were supposed to be a baddie, but you were sneaking about undermining them. Yeah, and putting yeah. like bugs and everything in there. So I was thinking, that would be that would be cool, but also if you de- developed the outer world, so it was like a GTA-style game. Okay. So it's like a double-agent GTA-style game where it was a bit bit sneaky Splinter cell styley, but also it was like um, being un- undercover... In a crime syndicate in the GTA world, an a GTA world. That sounds quite good. I remember Sleeping Dogs tried to do something like that, but it was badly implemented. So your version could be even better. So yeah, so I think obviously, like I don't know, 
I don't want to say mafia because that's been been there, been done. But online crime syndicates, online fucking <laughs> GTA style, <laughs> yes. open world game. <laughs> but the main character is also like an undercover cop or whatever, and you have to do like some sneaky missions and also do like you have to go do cop missions on the side and not be spotted and do yeah. Crime good. missions and not be spotted by the cops and all that. And I mean, how deep are you willing to go? Very deep, Ryan. For you, very deep. Yeah. For Stu, sneaking around in your hub and all that, and sneaking about. For Stu, just the tip. But for you, all the way. Wow. Um, <laughs> um, like imagine, imagine if there was like dialogue options, but the game didn't give you reminders of what you said previously. Oh, but that's not what you said. It's like, oh fuck! Uh, and then you have to like argue, lie your way out of it quick. I mean, what time period would you set it in? Now. Modern day. In the past, 15 years no, ago. No, no, I, I don't out. mean when you released the game. I mean, <laughs> what time period would the game be set in? I don't know. Well, probably like round about now-ish when there's technology and you can, you, yeah. can invent, you can invent gadgets to help with your espionage. Hacking and shit. Yeah. Yeah, all right, that sounds good. I'd play that. What do you call it? Uh, I would call it... Double Agent GTA style game. Oh, I like it. <laughs> it's like when you are a ice script, <laughs> but a game. Um, who would publish and develop uh, well, this game? Well, it'd obviously be Rockstar. Yeah, it'd have to be, wouldn't it? It'd have to be. It would have to be Rockstar. Fair play. I'll, I'll give you credit for that one. Uh, uh, and want then, yeah, I want, it, I want it to release in 2040. <laughs> Fair play. On the Xbox. <laughs> on the Xbox XYZ <laughs> W. I want it to release on the Atari. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking funny cunts, aren't you? Yeah, wanted uh, to release <laughs> so it can directly be in, in direct competition with the 1989 game Ghostbusters on the Atari. Uh, yeah, we can easily beat it <laughs> if we know the secrets of modern technology. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, we could easily thrash that ghost, thrash that shit Ghostbusters game on the Atari. It's a good game that was. Oh, but it's gone through it? several remasters already, so there's one on each generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, is. Was the Ghostbusters on the Atari the top down one or the platformer? The top down one, and then when you got to the houses, it went 2D and you had to knock across the streams. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I, I've seen that one before. Fair enough. All right. So, yeah, released yeah, on so, the Atari. Um, no, no. I'd like to obviously release it in current gen. Fair enough. I, I, I or maybe uh, coming in the future of uh, Xbox Series X yeah. next, next gen. That sort of gen. Yeah. That sort of new gen, what's coming up. Yeah. God, that'll give us something to fucking talk about, won't it? Right. Okay. So, Stu, what's your second choice? I'm going to go with um, rock and roll racing. You cunt. That was my second choice. Oh, when do you want, choice is, is this being released uh, with the Mega Drive? Yeah. This or be, like the Mega Drive minis and stuff? No, this would be on the PlayStation. I'm going full on PS1? Yeah, PS1. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stu, tell me about rock and roll racing. Two. So, it'd be, like, grid, but mixed with, like, building your own car. So you have to start... So the story was that we came up with is you're racing for, like, the Raven West equivalent, but rock and roll racing, and your team turns on you, so then they blow you up and they think you're dead. But you have to take the scraps of that car to build a new one, and you have to build a, get a crew together. Yeah, and get revenge. So this is a game that we discussed many years ago, isn't it? Yeah, this is a college yeah. game that we... Flashed out, yeah. Too spent too to much time talking focusing about. on our studies. So just to uh, just to make for those who don't know what rock and roll racing is, Stu, just uh, explain the setting of the game. It's like a futuristic racing on different planets, and the Raven West in grid with the uh, nasty rivals. Yeah, yeah they're like the so big I'll corporate say, baddies. Aren't come up with uh, in between races, you can play the pits like a Mass Effect game, and have dialogue options and stuff with FIFA. Mm. Yeah, so you could go and try and steal other parts of other cars, but if you get caught, then obviously that's going to impact the next race because they're going to be like out for revenge. Yeah, and you won't have that nice part which you've been trying to get hold of. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a good idea back then, it's a good idea now. So who would you have develop and publish? Uh, Codemasters. Some of the teams would be based on real-life rock stars. So you get the voice and likeness of like Metallica, say, and then they could be like one team, and then like a machine head, yes, um, like Rob Flynn from Machine Head could be a driver on another team, 
obviously Ozzy would be like a pit manager or something. Yeah, so it goes back to that sort of brutal legend all rock star yeah. cast thing. Yeah, that was funny, that was. Yeah, I think that would be... Obviously, I was like, like a beastie soundtrack as well. Yeah, I think that would, that would work very well. Would you have someone from Bioware come over to help with the pit lane scenes? No, they could... Codemasters could manage that. They did the same thing with uh, Race Driver, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, kind when of. you played as Ryan the Train McCain. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan the Train McCain. McCain we didn't even make this up. That's a real thing. It was clever, though, where when you're choosing your save, you save name, like you say, file. You, re- you replace his middle name with your name for then everyone knew what it, who you were. So he was Ryan, Ryan McLean. It was for me, yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. All right, so uh, I guess it's time for my second idea, is it? My game would be a special bespoke game just for Shark Select. Shark Cat. Oh, not Ryan Katamari? No, Shark Cat. I mean, think of it. Mario's got one. Sonic's got one. Fucking Crash Bandicoot's got one. Why can't we have one? Mm. Imagine it, right? It's like a whimsical arcade racer where you can play as us three. Uh, Master Fenrig. uh, Master Cumrek. And Master Wizard 2. And you can have other characters like uh, Ethel the Frog, Greaser of the Elevator, at Nylar on Twitter. And other such shots are like um, character. Oh, John Burnell, he could be on it. <laughs> you have a little police car. Yeah. No, he'd be doing a ride along, wouldn't he? He wouldn't be him driving. Yeah. He'd be <laughs> He's in the passenger seat. <laughs> yeah. um, you can have Tetris Man. You don't know what his special well, No, no, is. John Burnell would be the commentator. Oh, the races. yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> this punk's trying to do it. <laughs> he <three>. crashes <laughs> into first. He tries to pass out the ride. Wrong! And he gets spun out. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have, like, Mario Kart-style power-ups as well. I don't know if you've played Mario Kart in recent years, uh, no. but there's, like, a squid you can get, which sprays ink all over the screen so you can't see where you're driving. It's just... Oh, a, it's it, a big cum it's, in it. It's right. the meat staff. Yeah. It's, no, Ryan, it's not cum. It's just suspicious fluid. All oh, right. Stop being... Get your mind out. They'd be it, like, so. um... Like, power-ups would be, like, rather than oil spill, it'd be suspicious fluids, and then you, like, yeah. pour a vial of it on the floor. I'll be honest. Would there be DLC to have different podcasters, so, like, Grief Burrito DLC? Oh, you could do, yeah, P- uh, P- Pixie Podcast DLC, and a special music yeah. just fires copies of Half-Life 2 at people to knock them <laughs> off the track. A grief, a grief, grief Burrito drops a GameCube like a mine. <laughs> <laughs> what other power-ups could we have, though? I mean, I was just having to think. I can't think of the meat staff. What else could you do? And when Stu fires the meat staff, you get a little sound bag where it's coming it. <laughs> well, maybe everyone have, have their own like personal special moves, like Twisted Metal. Maybe yeah. there could be a Twisted Metal mode on it. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, like a battle arena. Yeah, like yeah, like Demolition Derby. Mine could be an area of effect move just called Jingle. Where they just do mine. I don't know what mine would be. Singing jingles at you. I'd throw an N64 at you, and then it forces you to get out of your car and put it in the bin. <laughs> 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 yes. That is fantastic. So, would Stu's special move be the meat staff, though? Or would it just be Stu being inappropriate and the guy just forces you to crash off the truck in shock? I don't know. It could be. What would your special move be, Stu? I don't know. He looks at you and his little character goes, beep, 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 beep. A little sensor thing appears over his mouth and you go, <gasps> and once you've got that look of shock on your face, like the emoji with its mouth wide open, you just crash off the track because you lose your steering. Basically, that's like a flashbang or something. Yeah, exactly. Like you being offensive is like a flashbang. Yeah. <laughs> I like Ryan's idea with the N64 as well. That's good. So that shark cart. Um, I think I, I don't know who developed it, though. I mean, who develops good kart racing games? I've got a bloody clue. Uh, well, just the people that did the crash one. Yeah, could do that, couldn't I? Or I could just, like, kidnap some Nintendo developers and make them do it. But but it's got swearing in it. Fucking do it, Nintendo. Well, I'm not letting you go home. I'll have a poo on your Switch. <laughs> So that's my idea, shark cart. What do you reckon? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. My third idea was going to be the one that Stu stole, so I'm going to have to think of a new one quick. Ryan, what's your <laughs> bastard? Mine is um, me and Stuart discussed this one in length as well. It's a persistent online zombie survival game. Oh yeah. So um, like a big mapped area with like loads of people online, and you can choose your classes. So like. Cop, medic, civilian, etc. But okay. there's all. Wasn't it just random? 
Like you just spawn in and you just get oh, yeah, you get your class and you get everything at random. Yeah, and then but there's only so many cops and so many medics or so many whatever. So you like you get this person. You so you might end up being like, I don't know, shopkeeper or whatever. <laughs> and then um, and, yeah, an NPC. <laughs> so you get to like build a safe house or whatever and watch out for other players, form alliances and everything. And then after a set amount of time, however long that is, uh like a zombie spawns or like a like someone becomes a zombie. Like a and horde that, of zombies coming. No, it starts slow. So it starts with like one, two, whatever. However, like a reasonable <laughs> ratio between how many, how, how many people are online. <laughs> zombie ratio. Yeah. So if it's like if it's a hundred player server, then just say like one of them becomes a zombie. Okay. And then when you die, you get to play as the zombie. Oh, that's awesome. So you just get back up and go after the, your former former allies. Yeah, and you unlock abilities over time. So obviously if you're a zombie, you won't be running as fast as you were. You might be shuffling. Yeah, yeah and then the longer you survive as a zombie, the more abilities you'd unlock. I don't know, like, you, so, might, you might learn to open doors or whatever. Can you mutate? Yeah, or you might evolve yeah. into becoming a running one and yeah. stuff. So you might, so you, yeah, you could choose to be a running zombie or like a jumping one or whatever. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's sick. And then, so the longer you survive, the, the more... Abilities you unlock as a zombie, but also, if you're still surviving, the more abilities and care packages you might get. Some might, the military care package dropped, ah, so, okay. yeah, so you can run out and get supplies. And yeah, so the idea of the police and like uh, ambulance jobbers is because they'd have access to guns at the start. But you wouldn't if you were just a civilian. Yeah, you have to make do with a stick or a golf club or something. Yeah, yeah. But you could be like a mechanic, so you can repair vehicles or like repair machinery, like to get like lights working or something. Or you'd have access to like wire cutters, so you can get into buildings and stuff. Yeah. Or if you're an engineer, you could build contraptions and traps. That does sound yeah. good. If you're the last zombie alive, do you get to go full William Birkin in Resident Evil Two and just become a killing machine? The last zombie alive? No, 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 the zombies just keep. Keep no, sorry. Spawning. Yeah, if, if sorry, if you were say like the second class human alive, and you got to into a no, uh, no, I was, just, I was going to describe it how, how it would work. I think maybe if you were the first zombie, but you survived right till the end, and you kept leveling up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be like ridiculous, but there could only be like so many of them. Otherwise, everyone would be like no, ridiculously okay. tanked. It'd be zombies. too difficult, wouldn't it? Maybe just like on random. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. And then, um, so like after thirty days or whatever, like game days in in game. Then there's like an extraction to get to, because obviously the zombies will just keep coming. Yeah. So you, and then if you reach the extraction, then you get bonuses to XP or whatever. Or you might start off with a a few levels higher in the next game. Yeah. So okay. if you say if you started as a cop and then you survived, SWAT and then the team. next game you might be like, yeah, like you might play as a SWAT guy or like the police sergeant and have a shotgun. Yeah, that sounds good. And oh, then yeah. um, obviously then the, the world resets. Well, then it goes back to normal, and then away you go again. That sounds good. Well, if you don't die, you get to keep your character for the next time you play. If, yeah. There we go. Then. So I've got a marketing idea for you. So it's a persistent online zombie game. Mm. Pos G. Sounds like PUBG. People will be interested. <laughs> there you go. Who would you have developing and publishing? Oh, fuck knows. I don't know. I'm not sure, to be honest. Any ideas, G? Who'd be good at developing a game like that? Yeah. We don't want EA doing it. <laughs> I'll ruin it for you, Ryan. I'll take control off you. I don't know. Uh, no. Um, Shart, um Entertainment. Epic, probably. There you go. Stu's got an Epic. Yeah. Yeah, Epic. Shart Entertainment. Yeah. That doesn't exist for legal reasons. We'd be, we would cause too much of a stir. <clears throat> All right, then. So, um, Stu, then, what's your final idea? Be a, an actual 40k... RTS. Oh, okay, like Dawn of War then? No, because Dawn of War isn't like a 40k RTS. This is like turn-based as you're playing a game of 40k. Oh! But it's on a computer and it's all animated and it all looks like a sick battleground. <laughs> so it's the... And like all the, they do all the shooting, so you obviously do your dice off-screen or whatever, and then so you get so many shots, then that's that so many shots get fired from that unit... Yeah, okay. So it acts it all out, what you're playing. So it's like the tabletop game, but a video game. Yeah. That sounds good, to be fair, yeah. So you could choose how many points you have before a battle and choose all your units and everything. Yeah. That'd be well good. That's not a bad idea at all. Would it have all of the uh, all of the races, or are, they, or are there any particularly shit ones you wouldn't bother with? 
No, they'd have to have them all, so then people can play as, use their thing, and obviously like have a pretty comprehensive army painter system as well. Yeah, oh yeah, it's all about so that, you can, isn't it? You can convert your, like, it was some sort of conversion thing, so um, you'd have, like, I was going to say loot crates, but maybe something equivalent of where you can get, like, different parts, <coughs> like, different arms and stuff that you can use on your models, so you can convert, like, your HQ choices or something. Yeah, so when you get... So would it be, like, um, Blood Bowl game on Steam? But obviously... Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl. Yeah, similar. So it's the tabletop game, but in the actual... Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Setting. That sounds really good. Um, I think for your unlocks, <sighs> maybe if like, you get XP in games and then you get certain amounts of XP, you level up and unlock stuff. That'd be a good way of doing it, wouldn't it? No. Uh, Keep you playing. What, unlock... I think you don't just unlock customization options, you just unlock cosmetics. Yeah. I reckon. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah. It's... So then you can just pick it up and then play as any armies you want. Yeah, that sounds really good. I like the sound of that. Maybe release armies as DLC, but then you'd limit it in like, people's. Yeah. I imagine this would be a PC exclusive just because it sounds powerful. But No, you could. Play it on the Series X or something, I suppose. Yeah, true, because it's... PlayStation 5. I guess in a way it'd be fairly similar to XCOM, wouldn't it, graphically? So. It'd be better than that. It's on, on the X. No, I mean, in terms of, like, the size of the battlefields and stuff. Or would... no, but... no, yeah, I'm thinking, like, huge battlefields. Big, so, one because like, you, you, you don't have, like, one space marine. You'll have a squad of ten. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And then yeah, they'll yeah. be all stomping around. Oh, wait, yeah. It'd be the equivalent of a what, six by four foot table, but, like, scaled... To yeah. 40k. So. All right, that does sound pretty yeah. epic. I like that. Yeah, and then you could, it'd be cool because you could have a free flow camera, couldn't you? And zoom right in. Yeah. Fly around the battlefield. And what you could do after a game is do like a full replay editor where you can, like you say, steer the camera around. The something. film yeah. director. <laughs> yeah. You just play it all out at full speed. Yeah, that'd be well good, wouldn't it? You could, you could like look over the the strategy of the person who beat you and work out how to get them next time. That'd be well good. Um, what? Who would develop you? Relic. Or he did Total War. Oh, Creative Assembly. Yeah, either Creative Assembly or Relic. So, I guess my question is, what what would you call it? What would it be called? Probably just, I don't know. It'd obviously be Warhammer 40k Battlegrounds or something. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Or just Warhammer 40,000. Just go full meta. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that'd be good. That That's actually a really good choice. Uh, I'm almost embarrassed to roll out my final comedy one. But it is something we've talked about a lot, and ne- I nearly mentioned on the podcast at various points. So I guess it's I guess it's time we come clean about this, isn't it? I think you know what I'm talking about here. Um, it's a game. I'm, I am going back in time for this one, Ryan. You can't stop me because it's from a certain point in history. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Nintendo Wii, using its motion controllers, uh, developed by Nintendo, of course, their family friendly entertainment. I give to you Dog Wank. Um, which is a game where um, you have to use the motion controllers to p- pleasure dogs. <laughs> well, you, you two thought of this up in college, so take it away, boys. How, no, Explain away. This was pre Wii, was it in college? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we were rattled by that. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, Dog Wank, um, the premise is you start off, uh, start off with basically like a shawawa or something, you know, just get the basics. The tutorial might even be a wooden dog, just to get some practice. <laughs> a wooden dog. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, I feel, I feel so bad saying this, but it is funny. And um, you level up your dogs as you go. So by the end, it's like um, a fucking Mastiff or something. You know, you've got to be careful there. <laughs> I'll see you. Yep. Chihuahua. I like that kind of uh, over voiceover in any, in any Nintendo game. Yeah. German Shepherd. Keep going. Yeah. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get lipstick, you've passed the level. But the dog can attack you if you do it wrong. If you do it too yeah, slow. If you go, if too aggressive. Or too fast. And you can. You have to use the nunchuck thumbstick to control the pressure of your grip. <laughs> I don't want to grab too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might bite you. But if you're too soft, nothing will happen. You'd be like, what the fuck's this? Um. And <laughs> we did discuss some DLC at the time as well, didn't we, Stu? Where you could, uh, <laughs> famous British Boy Scout uh, TV host Ray Mears. <laughs> you have to wank off Ray Mears. Yeah, just to put it into context, I say Boy Scout, he's not actually a boy. <laughs> he's a grown man. <laughs> he just dresses like a Boy Scout. <laughs> Ray Mears! 
Chris, and you have to... Uh, he's like a surprise round, isn't he? So, yeah. oh, shit, Ray Mears. He's famously hard to wank off. So... <laughs> Well, it just pop up. Like, so where would it be like base, like in a vet or something, or you just? I always like, where do the animals a... come in? It's just not based anywhere. It's just a Nintendo game. They don't yeah, really need I any always, explanation. I it's just like, a dog like, thing. You have to wank it. I off. was sort of thinking like Cookie Mama, but obviously it was like <laughs> like the vets, and you just walk in. A and, vet's table. Yeah. I... <laughs> like someone places the dog in front of you. You do you, you wank it off, and then they, they take that dog away and put another one in front of you. The animals like yeah, the, the animal sperm clinic. <laughs> Yeah, and Slash then Ray Mears. like someone picks up Ray Mears and puts him on on the table on his back. <laughs> you have to wank Ray Mears off and then take him away. Press A to drop shorts. Uh, I thought they were just floating in like a, a an ether, but your version's better, Ryan. See, you've contributed. You've contributed to dog wank. Yeah, just to make it worse for you. Dog everybody, wank and everybody listening, just to make it worse. Yeah. So everyone, I'm, thanks for being a fan of Shout Select for so long. Uh, I'm guessing they're all leaving now, but I have to get. I have to tell the world about Dog Wank. Um, obviously, developed and published by Nintendo. This is right up their street, isn't it? Yeah, they fucking love. So. They fucking love weird things done to animals. Look at poor Yoshi. That guy got smashed around the back of the head by Mario constantly. <laughs> Just forced to lay eggs. He's not even a girl, is he? Exactly. What's Mario done to him? Just shoved a load of love eggs up his <laughs> asshole. Forced to lay eggs. He's not even a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell, Mario. You're yeah. sick. Mm-hmm. Stomps on turtles is a cunt, but don't even get me going into Mario. So yeah, um, I think that's. Have we all done three now? Mm. I think we have, haven't we? Yeah, done mine. Yeah. So yeah. yes, uh, publishers of the world, get back to us. Uh, when we become famous, we'll uh, get against me. Oh, there's Ryan Katamari as well. Remember yeah, Ryan Katamari. So uh, do you guys want to just want to quickly mention Ryan Katamari? I think you just mentioned it now. Yes, but you must just carry on. Do you, want to, do you want to explain Ryan Katamari? <laughs> <laughs> Content on the podcast? What? It doesn't make sense. You mentioned it, so we just tell us what it is. Go on, it's you. <laughs> Ryan rolls down there a hill and picks stuff up. Like the game Katamari. There we go. Cool. Fuck. Right, okay then. Well, like Ryan calm down after that little tizzy. Uh, it's time for What People Responses, the part of the podcast where you, our lovely listeners, write in with your thoughts and brain ejections brain ejections that'll do right, okay so it's time for what people responses alright yes so first up we asked uh, if you could have any game made what would it be and uh, first on the list we've got uh, WT Famicom what the Famicom and this is my co-host and I thought of a game 10 years ago and I'm glad somebody finally asked me my answer is a game called B-Y, or Blowing Yourself. <laughs> An FPS where you, well, you know, DLC DLC for different pants and locations. I thought Dog Wank was weird. Fair play. <laughs> so, <laughs> I see Stu's reply, yeah. this isn't a video game, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone else has come well, not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Oh, the power we have if this was released. Yeah, but like, you need someone to like, Track, I guess, or it'd be like VR, and then, so you, so you're doing the action and then you can see it. <laughs> your, your missus watching, so you're missing watching. See you going. Right, what the fuck are you doing? Nothing, at least, at least not like, like Evil Seven. <laughs> trying try to explain that, or like you're getting bummed in VR. Yeah. <laughs> so walked in. Oh, like, oh, it's a skiing fuck? game. It's a skiing game. Yeah. Skiing simulator. <laughs> skiing simulator. Skiing simulator. All right. <laughs> Yeah, cottaging mode. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you complete the game, 100%. <laughs> yeah, cottaging mode. That was fucking brilliant, Ryan. Fair play. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Ronin Geek official podcast, uh, Final Fantasy XV remake, but starring Thick Boys. Yeah, that would make that game so much better. <clears throat> Watching four Thick Boys in the car drive around doing nothing for 70 hours would be brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. Which our lives. Uh, game Tripper UK. An actually decent VR racing game. Or a Lego game where you can build your own car and race it on the track you build. Or both at the same time. I'm down with that, yeah. It's like everyone's childhood when you made Lego racing cars and threw them down your stairs and then your mum told you off. Mm. They drove off a cliff, mum! Yeah, that works. Watch the next year. Yeah, cool. Fucking well, good mate. Fucking well, good mate. Alright, fair enough. 
Uh, I would like, to, uh, sorry, Jeffrey P. Davis at Jeff P. Davis would like to see another Sly Cooper game be, to be made. Um, the last one on PS3 ended with a cliffhanger. He was that raccoony bloke that yeah, loved Sly Raccoon, Vaults, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I remember him, yeah. Um, Ratchet and Clank collection that includes the non console or DLC games. Yeah, fair shout. They're popular. Um, like, like the those. phone one, the tablet one, and the booty. The booty? Yeah. Yeah. Like Robot Booty. Look at my Robot Booty. And guest starring games like um, Jack X or Hot Shot Golf. Awesome. I remember Jack. Jack and, De- Jack and Daxter. Yeah, I remember that it. That was a good game. I see Stu's made a good recommendation of getting Gex in there as well. <clears throat> I'd love to see a new yeah. Gex game. Deep Cover Gecko was fucking boss on the PS1. Yeah, it was. Uh... You could be a vampire in it and everything. That's detective. You could do all sorts in it. it was uh, yeah, it's awesome. everything, wasn't it? It basically it's just a platformer, but still, it was, yeah, it was like it was, Mario, it was like Mario sixty four, but better. Yeah, a million times better. <laughs> um, the Unexceptionals podcasts. Uh, can we finally get Half Life three? Uh, ooh, take it up with Pixie Podcast. He'll tell you. Yeah, it's it, locked in Area fifty one, isn't it? Yeah, and nobody, <clears throat> nobody yeah, wanted, no it. One wanted it. it. Trump was quite relieved it was still there. Uh, gaming pa- gaming casual podcast says honestly. I want a good naval RTS, one that isn't overly complex, but also incorporates real physics. That would be interesting. Like big battleships. and Would it be like World War Two? you reckon, in the Pacific, fighting oh. off zeros? Well, they still do warships these days, though, don't they? They're not, it's more like um, submarines nowadays, though, isn't it? There's not as many warships as there used to be. Like the Golden Age of Warships was like World War Two, where you had big destroyers and shit. There's still <coughs> destroyers now, and aircraft carriers and that. What do you reckon, Stu? Because you could do both and play as a submarine. I liked it when you played it on um, Empire. Yeah. Battlefield 2 had a big warships you could pilot, didn't it? Oh, yeah! I remember those. They were quite funny. Battlefield, sorry, not Battlefield 2. Battlefield 1942. That was the one, yeah. The original one. Yeah, the original one. You... Wait, which Total War was that? Like, um, Shogun 2, the expansion pack. Fall oh, of the yeah, Samurai, was wasn't it? Yeah, but Battlefield, yeah. Battlefield 942, you could actually pilot the warships. No, you couldn't, I remember. On the... See people trying to take off and fly in the right direction once you return the ship around. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake, just yeah. fall into the water. Oh, you, you, like, you just turn the ship and just bombard the <laughs> island you're trying to take over. I tried to play that single player once. It was very funny. Uh, I was on a, a bridge, a, a map. Well, where this, a... Is it the same maps, but all bots? Yeah. So there's a bit where there's um, a bridge in the middle. I just saw this German staff car approaching. It just... Bumped gently into a tank trap, and there were two Germans just sat in it, like, you alright? <laughs> Didn't even bother getting out, so I just shot them both and left them there. Hello! What are you doing? <laughs> um, he also says he'd like a VR Halo game. Am I joined to that, right? Would you play a VR Halo game? Well, I haven't got VR, but I what, probably would. What, would you that, play, though. in an ideal world, Halo uh, UNSC Soldier 1 in VR? <clears throat> it depends how immersive it is. I mean, like, like. Half Life Alex looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. With all the stuff. So if it, if it was like that and I had the space to do so, maybe. Yeah. But you know what I'd do if I had a VR game? Go on. I would recreate my house in VR and then yes, live in it. Subtly different in little ways. Because then, when you, you when you put the VR on, you'd feel everything you're touching in your, in your VR game because it'd be true. your house. It's true, it'd be amazing. <laughs> but in, in shiny modern graphics instead of real life. Yeah. I'm done with it. Like, you could change... Change certain things, like, I don't know, say you're doing the washing up, but in VR, <laughs> you could be doing something else. Dog, dog wanking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's brilliant. Who's next, Ray? Um, music Musing um, says he wants a Tron MMO. Tron MMO? That could be interesting. Didn't they try something similar? A Tron-MMO. Sim- a Tron-MMO. Yeah. Trombone. Didn't they try Rusty something trombone. similar years ago? A Tron MMO. The things to bell this. Just running around throwing discs at each other and riding bikes that go at 90 degrees. <coughs> I mean, well, it, it would have to be that like 80s style, I suppose, wouldn't it? No, they released one a, they released one a while back, a sequel, didn't they? Did you ever watch the sequel to Tron? No. It was quite Legacy. good. It was quite good. I recommend it. I've started watching <coughs> uh, on YouTube a lot of um, Corridor Crew. Corridor Crew? The um, visual effects artists. That have worked on films and stuff, but they've done a, a mini series in between their mini actual mini series. There's one called Rush, which is so far it looks like it's 
to turn it into like a battlefield, a live action battlefield gate movie. <laughs> and it's got Stephen Ogg in it. Oh, okay. Plays as a mercenary. It's pretty cool. That sounds quite good. It is cool. Um, but it's, they also do VFX of artists react to good and bad CGI. Oh, and, that but then, good. but it goes into why it's bad, why it looks bad, and then what the what they do differently, and then. Like even the great ones, but it goes into how the shots were done as well, so it's dead interesting. Has it gone into the Scorpion King? Yeah, oh, he's but the they've, first they've recreated it, like, like. Oh, they did a deep fake. Well, it wasn't a deep they? fake; they just re-edited it, and it looked so much better. <laughs> that is one of the worst bits of CG I've ever seen in a film. That did it, they did a deep fake on his face, though, didn't they? So he looks like it actually looks like the Rock. Yeah, they might have done, and then re redid all yeah. the textures and everything. But anyway, um. Yeah. What were we talking about? What people are sponsors. Oh, yeah, yeah. What people are sponsors? <laughs> Next one. So, uh, Tap Snaps at Tap Snaps PC says he wants a four, Warhammer 40k game revolving around the Horus Heresy and specifically the Drop Site Massacre where the Legions turned on each other and we get got to see the Prim- Primarchs battle. Hell yeah. So, quite a few. We'll have a 40k idea is coming out from everyone to the. <clears throat> Stu says he on the replied saying I think he just came. Oh, did you, Stu? I mean, there should be yeah. more Warhammer games, is what we've learned from this episode, really. Well made Warhammer games. There's a lot of Warhammer games. Oh, yeah. But they're just not Some very of them are good. just pure guff, aren't they? What the fuck? That's like a new one that's come out that looks like a cross between Dawn of War and, uh, like, Total War, hmm. but there's like there's only three like things you can play as, three yeah. armies you can play as, and let me guess: Space Marines, Chaos Marines, Orcs. No, uh, I think it's Necrons, Tau, and something else. Random. Um, oh, it's no, it's the uh, what's what are them ones you you've got the Imperium or something the Mech fellas, Tech fellas. Yeah, I'd Mech. Mech. Yeah. Okay, I remember I saw one which was like one of those fucking shitty phone games where it's like a lane combat game, like they just walk down a path and you have to shoot them. <laughs> What's that game called, Ryan? Is it actually called? There's one called actually called AdMac as well. Uh, I don't know. I have to check me check my Steam. It's on there. It might might be that one. No, it's not that one. It's something else. Um, Eldar oh, Wank. Yeah, Eldar Wank. Um, the so next on the list, Andy. Andy Endine says he'd like a Knight Rider game, please. <laughs> oh, yes. Like GTA, but with speech recognized recognition so you can talk to Kit. <laughs> Would like, you have to do it in a Michael... Like, like Kit, Michael Super Knight Pursuit voice. Mode. Or Kit, Turbo Boost. Kit, scan that building. That's the ladies' changing rooms, Michael. That's what <laughs> I said here. Achieve it or not. David Hasselhoff being a poivite. That sounds, yeah, that sounds like it could work. What do you reckon, Stu? Would you play that? Yeah, I'll well, the... play it. Oh, I found that game. It's called Mechanicus, one, yeah. isn't it? Mechanicus Erectus. Uh, Yemi has also said he, he would like a Command & Conquer Zero Hour remaster. Yeah, I'd be down for any Command & Conquer remaster at this point, to be honest. Uh, or oh, Lord of the Rings Conquest 2. Both games I loved during my <laughs> middle school days. BFME. BFME? Yeah, that's what it says there. BFME would be would be a fun series to bring back as well. I wonder what EFME is. BFME. Oh, BFME. Battlefield My Eggs. Middle Earth. Oh. I don't know. Me. I don't know. Yeah, me get in touch. Well, I don't know what Buff Me is. BFME. Google it. BFME. The Lord of the Rings, the battle for Middle Earth. Ah. There we go. There we go. The power of the Google. <laughs> Uh, next, Brian Mew, Chobo Chan Hunter, says the best games will always be ones I could never imagine existing in the first place. Ooh. For those I can imagine, maybe some sort of RPG slash immersive sim centred around working your way through a f- futuristic racing leagues. Ooh, hello. Kind of, or kind of a Hitman slash Mass Effect slash Wipeout slash F-Zero hybrid. Not far off Stu's idea <coughs> for Rock and Roll Racing too. Clearly, 
Sharty minds think alike. Mm. Mm, thanks for that one. Uh, Mayhem. Oh, Sammy. There's a VR version of Castlevania. Like a full-on experience. And it uh, still manages to retain its epic soundtrack and music. That would be really cr- trippy and weird. Like when you're leaping, leaping about and everything. Probably make you a bit queasy, wouldn't it? Remember that Castlevania you on the 360, Stu? Yeah. That was fucking solid. We got to the first boss and yeah, quit, and that was it. It wasn't the best, it. was it? It was all right, but... Well, yeah. oh, what's next, Ryan? Who've you got um, first? So, Jeffrey P. Davis would like... Well, I would greatly like another Soikoden. Soikoden? Soikoden game think. to be made. It should, should be done by the original creator <coughs> and the woman who's... and the woman who did the soundtracks. The first two games are epic. And then it just trails off. Last game was for the Japanese PSP. The joke is half of the games are in Japanese. Yeah, I've played Soikoden 2, which was a PS1 game. It's a JRPG, so it's probably why you two haven't heard of it. It was really good. It wasn't bad at all. I never completed it, though. Which is my, which is something I probably need to do. Maybe a life goal there. But yeah, fair play. More sequels uh, will be good. Ozdog 12, Lord of Spaghetti. <laughs> Uh, oh my lord uh, funny you should ask I have been working on a concept for years it's fully fleshed out and I and I have artwork commissioned for a pitch imagine mm-hmm. a game in the style of Shank you play as a cyborg polar bear trying to stop the penguins from blowing up the ice caps flooding the earth <laughs> that sounds awesome he's even put some he's concept on it he's got a, a huge cod piece on this uh, he's a cyborg pol- he's polar, a polar bear. bear he's got a big polar dick that'd be a really difficult dog rank level actually wouldn't it Polar bear with a minigun. <laughs> uh, but... Cyborg bear. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, seriously, the concept art's really good. So uh, maybe track... Uh, what, what's his Twitter handle? Ozdog12, Lord of Spaghetti Town. Yeah, get Ozdog12 looked at on Twitter. He's got some excellent concept art for his game. And GIFs. He's got lots of GIFs as well of things. Um, <laughs> Conquer and Destroy Show would like a... Tony Hawk's middle-aged skater. I would love to see this. Um, but, yeah, I've got another game I'd like to see as well. I'd like to see uh, Toby Rourke's Pro Foot Skater, which oh. is a game we invented by, way back in 2004, Just which walking. was skateboarding, but without the uh, it was without the, without the skateboard. Fair like aggressive point. street walking, yeah. <laughs> so, like, grinding was when you jump and you walked on someone's wall. <laughs> Like a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you could stop and your special move could be the worm, like just while you're walking and stand up again. Yeah, I like it. I think we should release that. I think we get that. <laughs> get that yeah, like, like, I don't know, double. Like, you could do, you could just jump in the air and, like, grab grab one foot like that and, like, whew, that could be a move. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Jump onto a bench and then jump yeah, off it and do a spin. Hey, never soft if you're still going. I hope you're paying attention to this. Yeah. Pro foot skater. You can bring it back. Aggressive street walker. I don't know which is the best. Well, which one? Which one's more marketable? It's like it? inline skating. You like aggressive inline walking. <clears throat> aggressive inline walking simulator. <laughs> yeah. Oh, VR. Like <laughs> VR. <Yeah. laughs> In your house. Everything's VR. <laughs> you know, I only realised not not too long ago why why they're called inline. Because all the skates. wheels are in a line. <laughs> you know what I realised the other day that Sarah pointed out to me, which. You probably you probably laugh at me for thinking as well, but you might also go, "Oh yeah." When you first get your phone, right, and you try and write "fucking" in it, and it yep. always comes up with "ducking." Yep. Did they, did you always picture like a duck doing stuff, and that's ducking? Um, no, I was just like crouching. Yeah. Well, I always thought ducking. It was like ducking. I was just, why is it called duck? <laughs> and then and she went, "No, it's ducking as in like crouching down." <laughs> like, oh yeah. What's that duck doing? I oh, you know, just ducking. <laughs> ducking about. <laughs> <laughs> so when it, when it all corrected to ducking, I was thinking of the animal when it's actually just means the uh, it means to duck <laughs> to duck as in as in crouch down. <laughs> what did you think about that, Stu? When you got, yeah, I always thought the same what? thing. Like, what's ducking? What's like some sort of weird thing? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not not like the normal act of actually just you know to crouch down. <laughs> it's like ducking. What the hell's that? Is it like dogging? <laughs> But you have to go quack, 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 every now and, again. <laughs> and eat bread. Yeah. Off each other's backs while you're fucking. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, it's ducking. That's what you do. <laughs> what? It's ducking, man. That's ducking is you, eat, is you eat bread off someone's backs while you're fucking them. And go quack, 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 when you come. Craig knows all about that. I've been. 
Don't pretend you weren't with me, Ryan. Just fucking go ducking. When we know? went to Douglas and did some ducking. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Maybe that word should be censored on your phone rather than fucking. Yeah, I think so. Now I know what it means. Yeah. I, had a, I had a Nokia phone once that didn't know what a penguin was, but knew full well who Hitler was. So I felt hell feeling it's got its priorities a bit. Why are we try, typing penguin Hitler? No, it's, it's, it's a completely different text. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> it's like, how can, like, it's like it wasn't even, I wasn't even trying to spell Hitler, as I recall. It's like, oh, do you mean Hitler? No, I don't mean fucking Hitler. <laughs> and I was like, penguin, penguin, fucking penguin. I didn't know what the penguin was. It's like, is a Nokia secretly extreme right wing Nazi fans that the penguin deniers? <laughs> the penguin What's deniers. even going on? <laughs> Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, final one. We've got Chris Copeline. Copeline. It says, Doki Doki Panic. Imagine the drugs they have. And uh, and no one will know because it's not Mario. Oh, yeah. Doki Doki Panic. That game, what, Mario 2 was secretly stolen or something. Mm. Oh, it's that biggest retro game thing that people talk about, isn't it? Fair enough. Uh, oh, there is one more, right? There's one more, yeah. yeah. Um, the Geek. There's a couple more VR ones the as Geek's well. The cores say um, uh, Knights of the Old Republic 3. 1 and 2 are great. The Old Republic was decent, but not a true Knights of the Old Republic game. Um, I would be able to die happy with a third game. Yeah, so would I. One that closed it all off. Yeah, that would be good. I agree. Could there be a mode where you can shoot Carthanassi in the face repeatedly a hundred times? <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up, Carth! And then he gets resurrected as Caden from Mass Effect and they get to shoot him again. Because yeah. he's just and, the same uh, character. And Anton Debeck from the second one. Anton Debeck? Is he a dancer or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like him. They've got the same name. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Anton Debeck. <laughs> they shoot him as well. Fuck you, Anton Debeck. He's not French. With a name like Debeck, how is he not French? You have not seen him. You know who he is, don't you, on telly? I know he's a dancer, but I don't know he's not French. He's not French. Oh, what... Why is he not French? He's not. He's called Dubec. That's well French. Did you tell me he's... Him. He's... Why are we discussing <laughs> because this? Because it's important, Stu. <laughs> he's a British ballroom and Latin dancer. He's Latin now as well, is he? Fuck's sake. You know what? I'm done with this. That's... So is that the end of what people responses to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple yeah, of VR yeah. ones. Yeah, there's a, a couple more. You know where they are. Like Gaming Arena said so virtual pod racing. Virtual reality pod racing, anyway. Virtual reality pod racing would be good. Could, with, the, with, with the screenshot of that, um, go on. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, VR Time Crisis was uh, by oh, Pat yeah. Conville. I would like to see VR Time Crisis. That'd be well good. Um, and Graham Mason said VR Skyrim or Hang VR Fallout. Does VR Skyrim already exist? I'm pretty it sure does, it does, it? yeah. It does, VR Skyrim, yeah. Yeah, nice try, man. Oh, it, said, it says, having just played oh, VR Skyrim, how about go. VR Fallout? VR, VR Fallout yeah. New Vegas, so all the glitches are like happening to you. So, like, oh my god, what's going on? People that exploded heads just working about. <sighs> yeah, that'd be good. So thanks, everybody, uh, once again, for dropping in some excellent correspondence. Some very good ideas there. <clears throat> Probably better than mine, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. Well, we look forward to hearing from you next time as well. And everyone who wrote in, you are lovely people. So, I believe this brings us on to the next part of the podcast then, boys and girls, doesn't it? It does. Having done the meat of the podcast, we now move on to dessert. <laughs> meat and two veg. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, Stu. And what's that like, Stu? What's meat and two veg? Hey, Cock and two balls. I was expecting you to say. All right, so... We've got next up. We can have the Wizard's Tower or the game. Which ones do you guys want to do first? How about Wizard's Tower? So have I. I'm just gonna block it. I do every uh, week. Hey. Uh, I mean, do we even still want to do the Wizard's Tower? We're we getting bored of it now. <laughs> Who's getting bored of it? Who's getting bored of it? Are you, are you guys enjoying it still? Yeah, it's fucking yeah. Introduce it already. Okay. So in those Christ. cases, as everyone's fucking still, diva. hang on. I just got a text off Master Fenrig. He says you better fucking do the Wizard's Tower or I'll get my ice fists out and fuck you with them. Okay, in those cases, <coughs> it's time to um, jump cut to the Wizard's Tower to see what those bloody wizards are up to, innit? Take it away, cameraman. Oh, cameraman. What? I've, we've already done the jump cut, Stu. You're ruining the magic. 
Hello, I am Master Fenric, and these listeners are my fellow wizards, Master Comrag. Hello. Hello, and Master Wizard 2. Hello. Hello. How are we on this fine day, Sarath? Alright, yeah. Yeah, should we just use their voices again? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get tired of using my own voice. Everyone keeps laughing at me. Watch it, Master Cobra. Do you want to talk at that fucking stew bell end? Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> His voice is so funny! Alright, um, so, for those who don't know, in the Wizard's Tower, we like to review a game and put it on our tiering cupboard. But just like, I imagine it to be a lot of shelves with a, with a copy of the game on where they are in the tier, with, a yeah. bin, with a bin at the bottom. <clears throat> Which is just full of suspicious fluids and an N64 and shit games. Uh, should we have a rundown of what's on it at the moment? Oh, should we? Who's got yeah, it? I could do that. Yeah. No problem. Should we, do, should we do it in the style of um, the chart countdown? <coughs> Top of the chops. No, it takes too long. All right, then. Yeah, I've done that before. Um, oh, shit, I have. Yeah. Yeah, fair play. Uh, yeah, number six. I'll just power through it. We've got Trash, Jump Force and Naughty Bear. Do a shit. Yep. Uh, fifth, Meh. We have Norman Sky, <laughs> uh, Darkness 2, Haze, Fallout 4. Okay, we have Dead Space and Star Wars Fallen Order. Uh, good tier, we have Anthem, Alien vs. Predator, The Outer Worlds, Dark Messiah, Might and Magic, Twisted Metal World Tour, Mario Kart 8. In uh, 2, Thick, we have Satisfactory, Untitled Goose Game, Alien Isolation, Fear, Soldier of Fortune 2, Splinter Cell, Chaos Theory. Shark tier, we have XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, Doom 2016, Mass Effect 2, Wolfenstein The New Order, Halo Reach, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, Far Cry 3 and Final Fantasy 7. And in Wizard tier we have Red Dead Redemption 2 and Sonic 2. And that's it. And that was the top of the tier leagues in the Wizard's Tower. Thank you, uh, Master Wizard 2, for reading it in your in Ryan's dulcet tones. Master Wizard 1. Well, yeah, Master Wizard 2 uh, has dropped that name. I got it to be a Master Comrade, hasn't it? Yeah. There's you wizards are so confusing. <clears throat> right, okay. So, who wants to go first this week? Me. All oh, right, then. No. Found a game I want to talk about. Go on, let's do it. Dying Light. Ooh, sorry. Sorry, my voice dropped there. So I can toss the phone over there. Dying Light, tell us all about it. So, this, uh, I think it came out in 2015 originally. The sequel is on its way, and it looks beautiful. So it's uh, living in this. You're a runner for like delivering goods and messages in a fictional world, not world, fictional city. And then, oh my god, there's zombies everywhere. Oh shit! Yeah, it's like a zombie infestation thing. Fuck. So you, you, I can't remember the proper story, the start of the story originally, but I think you get bitten, and then you. You have to take this stuff that makes you sort of immune every now and again. But you do these missions and stuff, but you get a few guns, but obviously they're dead noisy and they attract stuff. Attract, yep. attract zombies. But you can build weapons and swords and that and whatever. And beat them all up, but it's also really good at free running. Parkour. Yeah, I think I remember the original one. I've not, not played it, but I've seen it played. Yeah. It, does, it does look good to be fair. I don't know how I've not picked it up yet. So, yeah, it's very nice. <clears throat> Polished well. Plays well. It's made by Techland Studios. Who did um, Call of Firehouse, I think, back in the day? Maybe. Yeah, I think they did. Uh, and it's pretty good, actually. I'm going to put it in good. <coughs> good? Yeah, because when it gets like night time, it's scarier, and all the super buff zombies come out, <laughs> the ones that chase you. Hedge zombies. Yeah, and you have to get to like, you have to. You can only fend them off with like ultraviolet lights, you have to like shine the torch in the faces to slow them down and burn them. Oh, or run out. to safe cells which are surrounded by ultraviolet lights yeah that's so scary and you can like wait out the night but like the longer you're out in night time like the more XP you get and you get bonus XP for for being out at night to get like these like they do drop some stuff so there's like better equipment in there for you at night time ok yeah so it sounds like a so bit... risk and reward for playing at night sounds good though or you can just go to bed yeah in real life or in the game no in the game <laughs> back in daytime yeah. sounds good so uh, that was Ryan's uh, sorry Master um, Wizard 1's entry to the Wizard Tower this week what about Stu I mean uh, Master Cumbrag's entry 
Empire Total War. Ah, sorry. Go on, tell us about it. It's a Total War game, <laughs> based on empires. I'm sorry, it's right, a lot more. Then, so next. <laughs> 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 What more do you want? Tell, Total War Games. Tell the listeners what Total War Games involve. <laughs> Inform the listener. <laughs> well, like, you jump about on the world map and then you put an army somewhere and you say attack this and it goes into an RTS game and then you shoot stuff with muskets. It's a grand strategy game set in the age yeah. of uh, musket and flintlock weaponry. With yeah, it. It's just in really satisfying making a massive line of infantry and then having uh, Native American warriors running towards you trying to chop you with axes. Yeah, it's a bit one-sided and fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Fair enough. So, <clears throat> where would you pop that on the board of shartiness or not shartiness? I think just the fact that we sunk so many hours into it, it's going to have to go to thick. Yeah, because it was a bit buggy at first, wasn't it? I yeah. practically unplayable at large, and that does damage it. And the DLC wasn't fantastic for it. No, the DLC was pretty cack for it. Yeah, you were just playing the base game, weren't you? Yeah. So we're saying. I mean, hmm? Yeah, you can play the base game, but you can get the mods where it allow you to play as any of the um, minor factions that pop up throughout the game randomly, yeah. so you can play as the US. It made a really weird world map where, like, everyone had rebelled from everyone. Like, yeah. Scotland and Scotland was uh, sat there like, fuck off England and Wales, <laughs> just doing its own thing at the top. It's like, oh my god, everything's gone crazy. Everyone's falling out with each other. Yeah, there was two Frances as well. There was, like, the yeah. main Empire France, and there was, like, modern France. Yeah. Slightly side in the middle. It was essentially, yeah, it was essentially um, like, Royal France and Republican France. Just like falling out with each other. So, which one had Paris? Can you remember? Was it Republic France? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it got really weird. But every time I played it, France has never had the French Revolution. No, never. The, like the, the French would just seem really happy. It's like, what the fuck? Where's the anger? But yeah, good game, fair shout. Um, so, for me, I'm gonna go with Pokemon Sword. Which I picked up with my Christmas money. Because I didn't know what else to buy, so I bought Pokemon Sword. Same as the other ones. Um, with a few caveats, I would say. It's what is a caveat? Um, a condition or a, um, a small, like a hitch, like something, a, a changing factor, if you will. Um, it's different in the obviously this is the first one built for, what say the main console. It's kind of both, isn't it? It's a handheld and the main console. But as such, the graphics are probably the shiniest they've ever been in the Pokemon game. Um, the maps are all a lot more sort of 3D now. It's not top downy anymore. I know X and Y wasn't particularly top down from there on, but this is like a lot more modern, I'd describe it. Um, there's obviously different Pokemons in it, and some classics in there, some newbies. And there's this new thing, right? And it's a complete gimmick, I admit, where you can make the Pokemon go massive in certain battles. Oh, that Gigantamax. <laughs> Dynamax thing, yeah. And it's Gigantamax. It's pretty much just the same. Yeah, so uh, who was I listening to? Um, LGA I'm talking about. It. Yeah, so basically, so it's only in the gym battles I've seen it so far. Yeah. It's like Power Rangers, make my monster grow! <laughs> to make your Pokemon go really big. My penis grow! <laughs> Please! It's pathetic! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a little mushroom. <laughs> That's sort of another game crossover. Go on. Pokemon Wang! Pokerwank! Yeah, I'm down with Poker that. Pokerwank, yeah. Uh-oh! Charizard! That'd be quite good. If you shock, if Pikachu shocks you if, you if you do it too quickly. But anyway, um, I would say it's got shiny graphics, different Pokemons. They've tried to mix it up a little bit here and there, but it's still Pokemon, isn't it? So I will put it under... Uh, well, meh. No, I'll go as far as meh. I'd say okay. It's okay. It's perfectly enjoyable, but it's not going to like... I'm not going to be thinking of it once I've completed it. I'll be trading it in. That's what I'd say for that one, yeah? Uh, is that the Wizard's Tower? In those cases, let's go back to our normal... Wizard's Tower! Uh, how are we leaving the tower today? I think I'm going to stay up here. I'm just going to check the fjord and... Oh dear. Master Cumbrag seems to have had an incident. What about you, Master Wizard One? Well, I'm just gonna stay here and uh, 
have a sleep in the chair by the fire. Because oh. I'm sick of going down the stairs and back up again all the fucking time. I don't know why I we fucking live up here. I don't know why we even do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. But uh, I'm going to go down anyway to go for a poo. Because the toilets are on the bottom floor, which is not a good idea. I'm going to take the lift, which has been recently greased by our new employee, Nyla. Here we go. Oh shit, he's greased it too much. Thanks, wizards. Why do they keep going down? I'm glad one of them has finally noticed. Well, we, we go <laughs> up to review the tower and then they leave. Yeah, and then we, and s- then we sit in the tower. Like, 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 We're not allowed to touch anything. No. Last, time I touched, <laughs> last time I touched a bubbling test tube, Master Fenrig battered me. We have to wait. So they leave the tower and then we have to wait for them to come back up and yeah. then we go down again. Well, they always come back confused as to why they went down in the first place. So yeah. I don't fucking know. You're wizards. That's what I mean, yeah. You're so, supposed I to mean, be geniuses. At least we've got someone to talk to downstairs now, though. Yeah, we've got Merlin and uh, Nylar's about sometimes, isn't he? Yeah, it's usually in the canteen. Why well, is that greasing his shaft? Yeah, greasing the uh, shaft. Fucking loves it, doesn't he? Polishing that shaft, don't he, they? He's, he, he, it seems like he's found his calling in life, doesn't it? Yeah. But I, like, uh, some, I mean, now it is a little bit awkward because Master Wizard's just staring at us on that chair. Like, Maybe we should leave. So maybe we should leave, yeah. We can't take the lift, though, because Fenric's just broken it. Um, fuck it, we'll just go halfway down the stairs onto a landing and record the rest. <coughs> okay, so, it's the final part of the podcast. It's the game, Who Am I? Which is a new game we invented because the sexy name game was run out of ideas for. <laughs> so, um, last week's game, uh, did we get any feedback from it, Stu? It's not been out yet, has it? Fuck it, I keep it. <laughs> the timeline messes me up so much. Spot. Stu, stop using that fucking <laughs> word. <laughs> It's an addictive word, sorry. Yeah, well, don't. Um, so, yeah, I get messed up with the timeline as to what's out and what's not, but last week's, which it will be in real time for you guys, uh, the, we asked the question, I'm a big boy who spends spent a lot of time around boffins as a kid. I have a lady that lives inside me, a very shiny helmet, and all the personality of a cabinet, and I don't like seeing my multicoloured friends misplacing their explosives. <laughs> Who do we think it was, friends? Don't you say, Stu, because you know. Who do you think it was, Ryan? Master Chief. It was indeed, from Halo, Spartan 117, the deepest character in gaming, it was Master Chief. And if you got that right, folks, then you win one point. Well done. You earned it. Uh, This week's, are you ready for it? It is, I have travelled all around the country I live in, which didn't take long, constantly battling for recognition with my peers to be the best in my field. You must be good with animals to take part in my sport. I was the OG. Many have copied me since. Who am I? I warn you, it'd be quite easy to get this one wrong. So just have a little think before you post your answer. So there we I go. I know. Eh? I know. Do you know, Ryan? I think so, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. At least I'm not making it too difficult, eh? So um, if you think you know the answer, get those DMs, well, slide into Stu's DMs at Chart Select Pod. And let him know. Or if you want to give us a big long description of why you think you know, you can always email us as well. But chart select at Google. Dot, no, gmail.com, isn't it? Chart select at gmail.com. I knew that. So there we go. I believe that wraps up another episode of Chart Select. Yep. Uh, See you next time. Dog work! Uh, Ryan, do you want to finish the podcast in this new fashion you've got? It was quite good last week. Would you like that one? Yeah, go away. You're on. Alright, uh, so you've been listening to Chart Select. You can find us at uh, Chart Select Pod on Twitter. That's the main place to find us, really. Uh, to my left is uh, Winstall. You can find him at Winstall on Twitter. It's true. I'm Ryan. You can find me at Shark Select Ryan on Twitter. And Stuart handled the at Shark Select Pod Twitter account there. So if you need any of us, find us there. Yep. Bye-bye. I've got one final word. Dog work!